Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We are nearing the end of our two-day, 16-hour symposium marathon. So really happy um, to see you here back in the room. Um, we have two more things left in the symposium, um, beginning with Swana in the Bay Area, followed by a musical performance. Um, so I'm going to introduce the Zamin Project is a multifaceted art project that aims to create a space for dialogue and connection between Swana artists, curators, and artists in the Bay Area and beyond. Rula Saikali is a senior editor and co-curatorial director for Humble Arts Foundation and moderator for Zamin Project. She lives in Berkeley. Shagayak Sirus is a multimedia and social practice artist currently based in Los Angeles. She is founder of the Zamin Project. Tarana Himami is an independent artist, curator, and educator based in the San Francisco Bay Area. Her public works are designed as platforms for performance, encouraging a creative exchange between artists, communities, and the public. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome them. It works. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, we would like to thank Janet and Padma, uh, and most importantly, Abby Chen for joining, uh, for inviting us to uh, participate and represent Zamin Project here at the After Hope Symposium. Um, it is a pleasure to be speaking with. Uh, two of my favorite people in the arts community here in San Francisco about their work and uh, what it means to be building um, community uh, through creative arts projects in the Swana community here in the Bay Area. Uh, we have organized a presentation, sort of questions are sort of pivoting around uh, how they, how these two lovely luminary people know one another, what their work, uh, the impact that it has in the Zemin, or I'm sorry, in the Swana community here in the Bay Area and beyond, and um, what we can do or how we might think, strategies we might use to think about how community is built and sustained and can be something sustainable moving forward. So uh, 40 minutes is not nearly enough to get into these um, very thoughtful and deep ideas, but we will do our very best. So thank you for joining us. Um, the first question is, what attracted you to the Bay Area when you emigrated to the United States, and what appeals to you about this region now? Thank you. I'm going first because I came here first. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, it's, first of all, thank you uh, for inviting me. Um, especially Abby, who um, invited me to participate in After Hope with my bulletin zine that is downstairs, and then Shagir and Rula for inviting me to be part of this panel. I appreciate it very much. Um, I realized, thinking about these questions, I had to dig deep and go back, so bear with me. It's going to reveal my history, <laughs> my personal history and everything along the way. Um, I came to the Bay Area in 82, um, and um, it was after the revolution. It, it was right after uh, my undergrad from the University of Oregon. And it was an accident <laughs> coming to the Bay Area in some ways. My sister was coming, a number of my friends were all moving to the Bay Area. And um, when, um, what was the second part of your question? The second part <laughs> is what appeals to you about this region now? Oh, yeah. Um, well, it has remained to be true that from the beginning, I got connected with the activist communities in the Bay Area, especially the Iranian student movement um, that was very active before the revolution. I had already worked with uh, Iranian student associations while I was at school in the University of Oregon. And when I came here, it was very natural for me to uh, reach out to them. Um, much more organized, much larger uh, community, much more active in, in the Bay Area. And they had been here for a couple of decades. So a, a good history of local history that they carried with them mm. was very attractive. Nice. Okay. 
Um, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I have to also say thank you to Janet, Padma, and Abby for uh, this. Um, it's, um, it's also an honor to be on the panel with you and you, both yeah. of you. So I just had to uh, mention that. But um, I came to the Bay Area in 2011 accidentally <laughs> as well. Uh, I came right after um, the green movement actually in Iran. So uh, mainly um, there, were, there were a lot of pressure back in Iran and then the artists were kind of like pressured at the time. And um, so I just applied for a school <laughs> that was not great and I quit, I have to say, the first semester. But <laughs> um, but yeah, I came to the Bay Area and then um, I accidentally, again, I accidentally ended up uh, knowing about the uh, Persian community here. And also I was really fascinated by um, diversity in the Bay Area. I grew up in Iran till 2011, as I mentioned, and back then it was uh, Ahmadinejad presidency at the time, pretty similar to Trump, I have to say, but a little bit different. But <laughs> um, So the borders were closed, so I never had experience seeing any uh, people from any other culture uh, closely, so only Germans would come, which will have interaction in galleries, but not much. So I was really fascinated with um, how I can go beyond media and propaganda and how I can uh, meet people in person and ask, you know, know them um, beyond politics and propaganda in general. So um, that's why I fell in love with Bay Area at some point. <laughs> yeah. And and you've since you've moved, we've lost her to Los Angeles. No. But <laughs> we insist that you keep coming back. Um, but what? Uh, so that's 11, 10 years now at this point. So since 2011, um, what? Uh, what appealed to you in addition to the, I guess, the diversity of the people you were encountering here in the Bay Area? Like, what are, what are some other things that really just, um, I don't know, uh, uh, heightened your interest culturally and coming back and otherwise? Like, why I'm coming yeah. back? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, why you keep coming back, <laughs> thankfully, thankfully. I mean, um, <laughs> I love the community here and yeah. in general um, how active everyone all um, in terms of the social justice matter in art or yeah. um, how how we are not only talk about talking about art but we are taking action so this is something that i love bay area in general yeah. about it um yeah and i mean the reason i went to la was like expanding my connection in a way sure. and yeah. kind of like bridging actually here and there in some point which i'm i think i'm doing it but <laughs> trying i think so but yeah that's <laughs> Um, so it's, for many who may not know, these two uh, are sort of representative of different generations in the Persian community, in the Bay Area, um, but they work very similarly as far as from a either social practice perspective or a public, public practice perspective, um, engaging artists and people, not just in the Swana community, but that's a, a large, I think, um, demographic that is involved in many of your projects. Um, you two sort of represent, uh, not even sort of, you represent different generational um, nodes, so to speak, in the Iranian diaspora uh, community here in the Bay Area. And so it's, that's at least partly why it's so much, it's so thrilling to have you talking uh, about the projects that you work on and the different experiences and ideas that you bring to all of this and how that um, influences your, your creative practices. Um, I don't know about many of you. I am very curious about the first conversation the two of you had. So if you could describe a little bit of that, I'd be very interested to hear. I'm going to let Charriot go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I stalked her. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but, um, well, when I came to the Bay Area, well, I had I mean, I didn't know anyone specifically, like yeah. no one literally. <laughs> and um, I was searching a lot, um, you know, with like different artists who lives here. And accidentally, again, <laughs> I saw your Hall of uh, Reflection in Persian Center, which was, um, that was the search that <laughs> at that point, that was a good search. And then I, I started researching your name and like what you do. And I was really fascinated with um, Tyrone's work specifically because of yeah. how she used history and you know deep 
conceptual, you know, thought and community, you know, and gathering stories basically yep. um, that I didn't have access back in Iran because of the limited resources that we had, a lot of censorship. So it was kind of like um, we had, it was kind of like a whole censorship around um, Iranian who lived outside Iran mm -hmm. um, and we didn't know anything and I was like really like with through your work I was like oh wow these are like all the stories and it's amazing how yeah. um, I could find out but then I you know, I think we <laughs> and <laughs> messaged her and she was really nice and kind and yeah. she accepted and she had a meeting with us and uh, with me and my uh, previous partner and we had um, yeah, and I showed my photographies, and also I was working on a project called Lost Rock Project, mm -hmm. which was a carpet that I was traveling around, and I was, um, you know, t I, it was kind of like connected me to the Bay Area. I mean, yeah. I got connected through Bay Area through that carpet project with everyone still till today, <laughs> which is you were you were uh, still searching for the right school. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, and Tyron, exactly through that project. Uh, because it was so, it was socially engaged work, yeah. and I didn't know that. And Tarana yeah. told me that, well, there is a uh, program in <laughs> CCA that is social practice. Maybe you want to talk to Ted Purvis and Amy Balkin. And then I did, and I went and I studied that. Thank you <laughs> <laughs> for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because at the time you considered yourself a painter. And even the carpet was painted, and you were carrying it around, but it was that aspect of it. And I can, I can still remember the shine in Charir's eyes when I talked about this new field that seemed perfect for her. So I'm glad I was of help. That, Thank that's you. Fabulous. <laughs> um, excuse me, Taryn, was that the first? I imagine that you've had several conversations like that with respective generations of um, Iranian artists, students, people who have come and joined, you know, the larger Bay Area community. Um, is there, are there others that, other, I guess, conversations that sort of stood out for you? Or it sounds like the way that you and Sharia like, connected, it was rather unique. Is that, is that a fair assessment, would you say? <laughs> um, I think we kind of, yeah, we giggle a lot. And we did that from the very beginning that yeah. we met, I feel like. Um, yeah, it was a match yeah. <laughs> in some ways. And we continued to work together yeah. while Charlie was at CCA and we were able to do a number of projects together. And so it, the relationship grew. grew from there. It's true that now I am like kind of the point person for people to contact when they're coming. Maybe they're searching you know, like the Iranian community and outside of the Iranian community. Mm -hmm. um, when they're searching for the right school or the right uh, you know, city to live in. And I don't always recommend CTA. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. I have sent some people to LA. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in terms of Chagre, it just seemed like the right, um, the right fit. Yeah. Excellent. Let's see. Um, so this next question gets to uh, what prepared you to do the, the community-focused work that you do that is broadly defined as social practice. And I'm guessing, based on our com conversations, that it's as much to do with how the aspects of your life here, but also everything that you've experienced prior to that, so prior to emigrating to the United States and landing in California. So could you describe some of those events that sort of prepared you for that kind of creative practice work? <laughs> um, sure. Um, I think most inspiring for me, as I mentioned, the Iranian Student Association, which yeah. I will refer to, you know, reference again and again through these projects. Um, what was striking to me was the amount of um, work that they were willing to do, the mm. dedication that they had to their activism. They, yeah. you know, for generations, for a couple of decades, they actively pursued. Um, you know, democracy for Iran, uh, and after the revolution, they relentlessly were fighting the new regime. Mm -hmm. Like that kept going. That activism. They published feverishly. You know, they they uh, were also some of the uh, uh, first people that I felt like I could trust. Like mm. they really um, 
a very inspiring group of people. Yeah. And they, many of whom are still my friends and are my colleagues uh, now. So definitely yeah. goes back to uh, that, that experience. organizing that I witnessed and volunteered for eventually and participated in their programs while it lasted. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can go into how a decade, you know, for following um, like their uh, 1984, where, where everything kind of dismantled. For a decade, there was no community outside of the few people that I had met there. Yeah. Otherwise, we were a very invisible community here. Oh yeah. Hmm. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> for me, um, yeah, back in Iran, for me, it was for sure 2009 and the Green Movement yeah. uh, that that happened. It, I was at the time I was uh, studying visual art in uh, my for my undergrad. And uh, our school was also one of the um, main space for the presidential <laughs> actions, and all the artists uh, gathered because yeah. it was a. It came. I mean, it was heavily also art r rooted. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it was. It was. It was like a. It was. I think it was a a vacating moment for me in general as yeah. a, as a person who was. I don't know. I was 20, 22, <laughs> and. Yeah. Um, Witnessing how you know um, my like um, my friends were not coming back because they were you know they killed them in the yeah. streets so or, or like seeing them in the streets like being shot or and how they used art or like even the color green and it was like a whole unity moment that like when everyone gathered together started helping each other in a way and used art everywhere like from urban art to like uh, yeah. in installations performances even artists from outside Iran that we um, I mean the internet was shot but we were hearing and seeing um, images of like how everyone outside Iran were also united so yeah. those were kind of like um, impacted me a lot and um, I started doing a lot of more uh, performative or socially engaged work or participatory performances in streets or next to Lalit um, yeah. Park in Tehran Mocha for example mm -hmm. for that so I think like those were like the first seeds for me to kind yeah. of like how it's important that people um, you know share their voices and talk about it and yeah. also like yeah uh, use art to kind of like make change, <laughs> yeah. I would say, or like at least try. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I imagine that bringing that trauma into the experiential trauma with you and trying to process it uh, through creative practice, uh, first in Tehran and then in the United States when you arrived here, um, is uh, it's, as, a, as an observer, something to uh, to marvel at, I suppose. I'm not sure if that's the, the most, if that's the right word exactly, but it is something to, um, that I've noticed that in both of your work, that is something that it's uh, just deeply engaging from an audience perspective, but also that it is, there is so much resonance, I think, for people, um, specifically in the Iranian, in the, in the Iranian community, but other, uh, other communities that have, that are part of the larger uh, Swana identification, but also others who have, anyone that maybe has lived out the, the lingering trauma of settler colonialism, colonialism, or imperialism, and the long rippling effect of that. And so there is, uh, I don't know, there, there seems to be a, a profound resonance in all of that that is um, something I think that goes toward further sustaining community, if we want to think about it in those terms. Um, so that's, yeah, that was something that came up as I was listening to the two of you talking about this. So thank you for that um, very generous way of describing sort of where that comes from for you. Um, as representatives of different generations in the Bay Area, I'm wondering if you can speak about um, just the, the importance of intergenerational communication, connection, and how that sustains, uh, builds and sustains community. I can talk about that. You can go ahead and start. You should always go first, but it's okay. Um, I think for me, as yeah. a person who came, for example, uh, to United States, no, 
didn't know anyone and Tarana was my first mentor or like yeah. person who knew who had so much experience and I was like wow like back then she didn't have any resources how she did this yeah. <laughs> for me kind of like was um, really amazing also um, and again accidentally I was a translator of a project <laughs> yeah. that um, it was a, a CMR Kurzan foundation that we went it was my first time ever that I started under, like knowing um, Iranian diaspora in the Bay Area. Yeah. And, uh, we went to everyone in Bay Area who were from the older generation and asked them about how they resist through censorship and how, you know, uh, what they did as a hopeful gesture. Yeah. And um, that was the first time ever I was hearing stories from Iranians outside Iran. So I, I was so overwhelmed by wow, like this whole story has never been told back yeah. then. I mean, in Iran for sure. I mean, right yeah. now it's so much better. But um, And then um, I think for me it became as a part that, wow, like if the generation before me would tell me these stories earlier, then I yeah. would act differently. And then how this yeah. creates steps that you move forward, how, you know, it's so important to kind of like bring voices one after another and yeah. kind of like, go from that so that yeah yeah that was coming up for me yesterday in our conversations as well that there is such a similarity between my generation and um, the generation um, that came after 2009 election disputes right yeah and there was a 30 year in between that no Iranians got a student visa yeah. from Iran there's no yeah. embassy that nobody came so um, it, it, it was so important, not having known the kind yeah. of trouble that we had to go through to sort of establish ourselves and learn about the world that we're living in. Of course, this is the time that there was no internet. Like, there was yeah. no information. You say you don't know anyone, but you know, struggling with the language and not knowing what's outside your door yeah. in some ways yeah. um, was a real challenge for us, and it took a long time for my generation, and like your generation, <laughs> there was a whole bunch of us around the same age that yeah. knew, had very limited knowledge of what was happening, uh, you know, and we were trying to figure it out together. So for me also, it was amazing to meet this um, community that had, um, you know, experience in the U.S. Yeah. And there were people who were born here as well as like, with, vast differences in experience. Sure. People who were second generations, people who were like me, migrants or had come earlier, but they knew this country, they knew the politics, they were yeah. very connected with the political movements that were happening in the 60s and 70s in Bay Area specifically. Yeah. And so there was so much to learn. And for me uh, now, I feel like I can be that person for this generation and I've tried and yeah um, you know it's not, I, I'm not alone in doing this yeah. by any means but I'm happy to be one of them yeah that's lovely <laughs> um, there's so much work that both of you could talk about um, that has just from uh, speaking only for myself but um, dazzled many of us and made many of us just thinking about uh, diaspora, about community, about archiving, trauma, like there's just these large, these huge questions that you manage to um, not boil down, but present in such a way that is beautifully executed and visually stunning and engaging across the board. Um, so there's only two that we're talking about. So um, could you describe the projects that exemplifies your work in this community building? All right. We have some visual to share. <laughs> Ooh, the complications of glasses. I can't see that. Do you want to sit here? No, it doesn't help. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, so I wanted to actually start with this one slide that kind of shows the trajectory of the, my work that is focused on collective projects and bringing community together. Since 95, like really right at, out of college for me. Uh, the first gatherings were focused on bringing women's voices into a sacred space. I collected 
wishes and stories, poems and journals from Iranian women um, in my community and created a whole bunch of projects around it, um, creating objects, installations and performances. Worked with um, you know, 15 amazing women in the process and we got to tell each other's stories. I mean, just a really special time for us to connect. Yeah. Um, that led to Hall of Reflections, which uh, Shagriger was mentioning, where I invited the community of Iranians in Northern California to bring photographs and stories um, together because we, you know, our stories were being lost. Mm -hmm. There was no Facebook. You know? yeah. I mean, there was nowhere yeah. to actually get connected and, and see images of our community and also images of our past. Yeah. Having come here as a student uh, with a suitcase, basically without <laughs> any belongings, yeah. uh, myself, I had, and away from family, I, those stories were completely lost to me. Mm -hmm. And so collecting other people's stories was kind of retelling my own story through their um, narratives. So Hall of Reflection has ended up um, being shown, uh, you know, as installations everywhere. But the, one of the most important aspects of the project for me was when we uh, brought the community together through workshops. I collaborated with a number of writers. Persis Karim, who was teaching um, teaching at San Jose State yeah. um, University at the time uh, in the writing department, was one of the people, uh, one of the writers that collaborated with me, Shahnoush Parsipur. A very well-known Iranian activist writer uh, who had come to the Bay Area was another one um, that conducted the workshops in Persian and you know a number of other people came together and that those gatherings became so important for us. This ended up being the, the you know events uh, I think the first gatherings were like November of 2001 like right following 9-11 events and we really needed those spaces yeah. to have conversations and, yeah. and uh, tell our, the complex stories and also um, lives that we were living yeah. at the time. Yeah. Um, leading to Cross Connections Project, which I uh, worked with Persis Karim directly, worked with Center for Art and Public Life, with Sonia Manion. Um, as the lead, and we brought, um, we wanted to bring Iranian artists together. And at the time, I knew two other Iranian <laughs> artists, but I had heard um, a number of people were, uh, like Ghazali Hedayat was here for her MFA at San Francisco Art Institute. Uh, Ala Ebtekar had just gotten accepted at Stanford. <laughs> yeah. You know, there were a number of people that, and then through um, research as well as recommendations but through the art community, we were able to bring over 20 people, writers and artists together, and we met regularly. And we can actually, I have this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> Oh yeah, there, there we go. Okay. No, I think I, I, I do you think I'm too far. <laughs> I want to be in control. Sorry. <laughs> so actually, this beautiful poster was designed by Ardalan, <laughs> who's in the audience today. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically, I met Shadi and Ardi, who have, we are now who are here today, and both amazing artists, yeah. and we continue to be friends and collaborate, co collaborators since. I met them through this project, and, and there's so many others that have become... Um, <laughs> I, can... I think I'm just too far. I think it's too far. Um, and so we um, basically, yeah, you went... Go back a couple, let's see. <laughs> can you go back to show the images of our workshops? <laughs> Michael, don't sit. It's not working. <laughs> uh, we it's were not able to come together as, oh, there we go, as group, met every two weeks. Um, it's just kind of amazing that we, you know, 20 of us would meet uh, every two weeks for these gatherings at CCA, bringing 
um, responding to our history and telling stories of our lives. Um, and <laughs> sorry, you guys. Um, eventually creating two exhibitions, um, one at Intersection for the Arts, where we had the space for about a week. Um, we lined the gallery with, with dates, actually, starting from 1900s to the date at the time, which was 2005, and artists and writers responded with new work. And they each selected a date and responded to, to that timeline. And uh, we also looked into the history um, of Iran and US and inserted the timeline with, with that narrative, yeah. uh, putting the two together. And I'm mentioning all this because, <laughs> so, because it comes back again and again. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to just jump into this. That second year, we um, asked the community to bring archives, anything. So it's been a very active community, but a lot of the efforts of community organizing, organizations would come together, but they would fall apart. Like sustaining those, those organizations was mm -hmm. extremely difficult. So we were looking for archives yeah. that might have disappeared or might be you know, at someone's home. And yeah. what we came across uh, was all of the library of the Iranian Student Association, which was quite extensive. I mean, not only they published feverishly them themselves locally, yeah. Um, from zines to books and uh, translations and so on, but they had a collection from everywhere across the world, like everywhere that Iranians were active. They also had collection of all the activism that was happening here locally yeah. that they were participating. So we had the space for like four days, maybe a couple of weeks. You're just jumping over those. <laughs> okay. I didn't do anything. I think it's and, uh, acting we, weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> basically didn't sleep for a while trying to organize the material and unfortunately after after the couple of weeks all of that material went back into someone's basement but we were able to bring the community together what you're seeing here is one of many images that we were able to um, capture of all of the like very active Iranian members of the community who've been running all yeah. these different organizations from uh, South Bay to Marin to like Berkeley. I mean, wow. just really Northern California. Yeah. And this is just a fraction of people who've um, showed up uh, and brought their archives. Um, the focus of our project became the books and publications, knowing very well how rare they were. They were basically books that were um, disallowed in Iran, so being caught with any of them since like 1963 would have ended up uh, in jail led you to yeah being arrested and in yeah. jail so most of these books and publications had been destroyed already uh, we had a and I think it's the images that we passed so I'm just gonna keep talking sorry okay <laughs> so we had an opportunity to bring the books back from the basement uh, at a residency at the lab locally uh, great gallery here locally and they gave us their entire 4,000 square of space, brought the books out and were able to reorganize it and we, our aim was actually to create a list as a proposal for the Library of Congress yeah. right, to be sent off for, for um, um, throughout that time. We had to actually invite past members of the organization to make sense of the archives for us. Um, also invited a number of artists. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> a number of artists to respond to the archive with many different projects. Um, and you're seeing some of them right now here. We're going back now, you can go forward. And so this is the lab. Um, the books that you see, the Mao books, were the translations in Farsi wow. <laughs> that you could actually, at the time, purchase from any of the bookstores from Berkeley. And uh, we invited the community for conversations and also performances. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Should we, do we not have that thing anymore? Uh, it's not working. Um, okay. So we can keep going. You can keep going. And we like had an, another opportunity to invite artists from outside of the Bay Area at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts, a number of artists that I had been in touch with, but through this opportunity, we were able to bring them here 
Reza Aramish from London, Leila Pazuki from Germany, as well as uh, Gita Hashemi from Toronto came, and each with a very different perspective, very different relationship to this particular history. They created projects and performances. Mm -hmm. We um, can jump ahead a couple more images, readings by the community. Keep going. Thank you. Um, so this is Yerba Buena. The installation and the videos are th that follow also are from that exhibition. And um, we, let's see, keep going. Yes. Some of the performances by Darvak Theater Group right. that happened at the lab. Wow. They're still active, still creating uh, fresh work. Um, this is performances by Reza Aramesh. We can keep going. Gita Hashemi. Wow. And finally, the books in 2009 were acquired by the Library of Congress and is available for research right now. A number of PhD research has been done on the subject. Yeah. I've had the opportunity to meet people and be in conversations wow. with them, yeah. which is incredible. And then uh, a few years later, Hoover Institute completed their collection of the materials, so they're also here locally. UC Berkeley has some. We can keep going. Um, some of these are, um, yeah, maybe some of my slides have disappeared, but um, we'll cool. jump to fabrications, and we can stop here, I can talk about it. Uh, so fabrications uh, happened in 2014, and it was an invitation um, to a number of artists to respond to that history. Um, 12 artists were invited from LA as well as the Bay Area and we created a pop-up bazaar. We really uh, were inspired by the, the strategy for uh, propaganda, both uh, the successful strategies that different groups, di different activist groups, but also the Islamic Republic had used very successfully in Iran to, cr to populari popularize um, images of protest and the ideas that they were promoting. And so we used the same strategy and created performances, um, film screenings, as well as 12 booths that invited artists. And Shariq actually participated in creating some projects for that. We can keep going on that. Um, Michael, yeah, and um, I collaborated with, um, I, I, in a residency at, uh, I always mess up this, CIIS, California Institute for Integral Studies, uh, to do a research on um, that particular history. So we, we actually looked at the history of dissent in Iran, and it's parallel to uh, across the world, like the history of dissent across the world, and created a, a zine that is in After Hope uh, downstairs right now. And the other thing that I have added here is, of course, I've continued to work with communities, many projects, many exhibitions curated. Next. And I just wanted to point, bring you up to date with two recent um, curations that I did um, 2019 <laughs> in person exhibitions, <laughs> uh, San Francisco Arts Commission, um, <laughs> the, which is the image you see here, um, with uh, artists from the West Coast, four artists, Tannaz Forsi and Gellere Khoshkozaran came from LA, and we had two local artists, Sahar Khori uh, and uh, Minur Samorodinia here. And the one that Shamil participated in as well, the next project, Next slide, was once at present at Minnesota Street Project, where I co-curated with Kevin Chen, a past collaborator, uh, amazing curator locally, mm -hmm. and we brought in a larger number of Iranian artists of the new generation. So this is, yeah. this is um, yeah, 20 artists that had very different relationship to the Bay Area, but mostly had come to the Bay Area at different times. And yeah. I was lucky enough to be able to um, continue to work with some of the other artists, but yeah. meet a whole gen new generation of artists that yeah. have, I think three or four of the artists I worked with were at school getting their MFAs at that time. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I want to say is that since then, we have lost four or five artists to other states and other countries. Yeah. So, yeah. so that... Whoop. <laughs> 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 oh, 
toch af als ik het en weet geen moment. Dat is microfoon. Ja, left us. So thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Um, I have sneaked in a couple images of the catalog that we're finally printing for that show. Oh, good. So you see Sharif's page and Shadi's page <laughs> and uh, Ala's page, as well as a couple performances that happened during that time. Excellent. This is amazing. I didn't Thank see you, it, Charlie. so that was a surprise. Come to, to me. <laughs> so much. Okay. So I know that's yeah. challenging to follow because just so much work you produced. In I'm sorry. No, no, no. In 25 years, um, it just it creates a lovely, I think, context for the, the the sort of the history that we're trying to wrap our heads around that you are both representative of and move forward into sort of what brings us up to date, which brings us all here, which is Zamin Project, which you can talk yeah, about. I, yeah, Michael, ours doesn't work anymore. So after pandemic, this technology is really interesting. <laughs> it doesn't work. So um, yeah, so um, I will also talk about, I mean, later on, but um, about three projects that kind of like led into Zamin, I have yeah. to say, and also like how I got connection through Tarane and yeah. like the, our generation that Tarane gathered that yeah. we know each other from once at present actually. But uh, Zam, Mark, you can keep going and then, <laughs> oh, I can talk about it. So yeah, so uh, Janet beautifully uh, explained what is Zamin Project at the beginning uh, as mm -hmm. an introduction. So um, I started Zamin Project in uh, two, ta actually, I received the grant from California Arts Council in 2019 yeah. for Zamin Project uh, when I was working at Aggregate Space Gallery. Yeah. Um, and I was, I mean, when I was working there and programming, I was always like try to bring like any Iranian and Suwana <laughs> community yeah. to the gallery to kind of like, um, you know, curate their work because I understood, I understood their stories and backgrounds in a way and I could be able to work with the aggregates team to yeah. kind of like bring it into the contemporary world. So um, that was really amazing. And um, whoever I knew from Wansat Present and uh, Tyrannus <laughs> projects, I was bringing them to aggregate. So I was kind of like um, getting introduced to them uh, through yeah. Tyrannus. And I have to say all Iranians mainly know each other through Tarana. Yeah. That's not a joke. It's very real. <laughs> It's very true. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, so when pandemic happened, so for sure the project, and I was not lo no longer working at Aggregate, and uh, I was I became a basically guest programmer mm -hmm. to this grant that I wrote specifically for Swana uh, community. Yeah. And um, I mean, a lot of things change. At the beginning yeah. when I wrote the grant, it was for Middle Eastern. Yeah. Um, honestly, and yeah. um, after, and then Black Lives Matter happened in 2020, and everything kind of like came together as a puzzle for me to kind of like be stronger and understand from and learn from other communities like uh, African diaspora to kind of like how I can actually now identify and bring together uh, yeah. Swana community. Yeah. Now, there were a panel uh, in Southern Exposure before pandemic that actually talked about Swana with Zolfi and yep. Azin Saraj and Zolfagar uh, Ali Bhutto and um, you were the, Dina you know, and, and, and Kathy. Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and everyone. Yeah. And uh, so, um, That was, so everything kind of like for me clicked in that way that, uh, okay, yeah. uh, how this can happen. Um, I really wanted to have, you can keep going. I, I really wanted to have a hmm. Zamin name. Zamin means earth um, as a name that, because I was keep thinking about why Middle East is, I mean, it's a colonial name for mm -hmm. sure from yes. the British and based on their geographic uh, situation too. Mm -hmm. um, us and then Swana, Southwest Asia, North Africa was a new term yeah. that I found out through, through uh, Targol Mespa that uh, a queer community actually yeah. came up with the name. So those panels that you can see, these were like three of the panels that we started with Rula uh, who, um, <laughs> who brainstormed with me and all <laughs> things, everything um, to kind of like, okay, how we can identify what is Swana and then um, how like, 
how art leaders and institutions can talk about uh, mm -hmm. how we can define ourselves now. Yeah. Because what, I what was happening in most of the institutions, they were mentioning that, well, th like they knew only two, for example, Suana artists or yeah. Iranian artists. But um, I wanted to kind of like, it was, for me, it was a research too, like how many artists live in the Bay Area, yeah. and how many Suana artists live in the Bay Area. And, um, I found through researching through Kathy Zarur's, yours, Tarane, I found 70 Swana artists right now living in the Bay Area. Yeah. And I was like, I will create this, uh, you know, uh, list of artists and it's, it's ongoing. It's a Google form that everyone can sign in, put their information to kind of like tell the institutions this Bay Area is small. Tell yeah. the institutions this shouldn't be my research. This should be any institutions who have, yeah. yeah, who has the resources to kind of like identify communities in general and like right. how they can give them voices in a way. Yeah. So this is us. But you can you can oh, keep yeah. going. <laughs> this is our fourth panel. <laughs> and um, also when I was in CCA. Um, uh, Mina Mittem was right after um, um, the uh, Donald Trump election, and it was right at the time that the travel ban happened. So yeah. I was personally affected so bad <laughs> through yeah. that because, like, from being from the airport move away or like you know I had so many scenarios in that yeah. time um, because of my citizenship status. But you can keep going, and then. Um, this was a whole program that I brainstormed with Kathy, Zaru, and Tarane, and uh, uh, we came up with the idea of like, okay, how can we actually bring together all the, uh, you know, uh, CCA, you know, mm -hmm. um, students and also like professors and like who uh, who are there to kind yeah. of like bring together and say meet the, like who we are in a way yeah. it was panel discussions again video screenings it was workshops it was a uh, library it was like we had so many uh, different aspects to it so this was the first time that this came to me in a way yeah um, yeah and then um, and then this one I put in honor of because uh, most of the artists in, in honor of, including like Zamin also, like they, um, I know them through Tarane and Bonsat Present mainly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I knew them from before, uh, but um, I got closer to them and I started, because my project was about, in Bonsat one, Present, my project was, it was a video installation and it was about political prisoners in Iran. And then um, I met a lot of, from my generation who experienced being in prison or yeah. who had loved ones there and they never, and I felt like they never shared their feelings. This is beyond politics. This is like what they feel in a way. Yeah. So um, this was kind of like a response to that in that realm. But yeah. yeah, and we are still, I mean, whoever we know from you, we are still collaborating and we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, All yeah. right, well, um, we're getting, I think we're getting very close to the end of the 40 minutes. We've kindly been allotted. Um, so this question, it's, it's a bit, it's, you know, it's fairly large, but it addresses challenge as far as sustaining building community. Um, not something that either of you seem to shy away from. Yeah, you know, like you, you face these challenges head on and, uh, and you know, approach that with the, with open eyes and want to engage others in that in, in addressing those challenges. So, last question of the panel: What challenges come with cultivating and sustaining the Swana community in the Bay Area and beyond? Simple. I know. Oh my God! <laughs> Very simple question. Well, it's been challenging. Right? Yeah. Um, I mean, looking at what I've done in the past twenty years, there's these huge gaps yeah. between one project and the next, and those gaps have been spent in trying to raise money. Yep. <laughs> you know, write grants, do this, do that, to be able to get a tiny bit of uh, funding yeah. for a hell of a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and yep. also not, um, like, believing in the work so much and yeah. the need for it, um, to not shy away from doing the work, but also, you know, it's not possible to sustain this 
without support, <laughs> yeah. you know, from, from people um, within the community, but also, I mean, not just me, everyone who participated in all those projects, yeah. all those times that they spent organizing and coming and having conversations, even the workshops. We had like very small honorariums for a ton of work that, yeah. that everybody did with open hearts, yeah. but it's not sustainable. Yeah, you know. So, I don't know. What was the question? <laughs> um, I, well, I think you've art I think you've articulated perhaps the paramount question with, or the paramount problem, which is uh, um, available funding for programs, right, and exactly. you know, outside of outside of institutional contexts. And right, that's, and know, that's within certainly... institutions as well, that you know, the projects. Uh, could really benefit from Absolutely. institutional support. But, but one of the things I've done is to reach out to galleries and established institutions yeah. to get their support. And for instance, at CCA, the center, they did all of the admin work for us, which mm -hmm. was amazing. And we yeah. learned so much from them through the, or the amazing organized work that they were able to yeah. offer to us at that time. And at the different galleries that I've worked with, also, Intersection for the Arts, you know, mm -hmm. Southern Exposure, Yerba Buena, they've been able to bring resources that wasn't otherwise available to us. So yeah. I think it makes a whole lot of difference. And this is just one project, but yeah, you can one. see like how much it has affected like bringing the community together yeah. for decades now. Yeah. It's just imagine if there was funding. Absolutely. <laughs> and resources. What do you think, Shag? It is challenging. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think the most challenging part for me was that I, I think like me and Tarna had this in common that we are like, we are artists. Why, why there is no other institution are doing this research and like yeah. bringing us? Yeah. Um, and um, because there is no res resources and there is no information and education in institutions. Yeah. Um, we have to do that because no one else is doing it. Yeah. Um, and um, this is kind of like, yeah, this is, it's been challenging in a way. Like in Zamin, I'm hoping that this is an ar ongoing archive. Yes. They're actually working with archives.org to kind of like have them archived forever. Yeah. <laughs> and then we yeah. are keep adding interviews like beyond mm -hmm. propaganda and beyond, you know, media and politics. And this is um, like in interviews, if. I don't know if you watch them, but for example, Ibtihar Shadid was saying, well, I want to, I want to work on Egypt from, you know, yeah. before even uh, the Islamic world, and they are keep forcing me to do, um, you know, about uh, yeah. Arab Spring, for example. So, like, these are a lot of pressures that it, it is existing, yeah. and they categorize us in a way, and most of the institutions are using... Um, different communities in an educational section, yeah. uh, unfortunately, and um, it's it's tough. So that's why I think it's really important that we we speak up, we talk, yes. we give voice, and then we share stories more and more and more. So like yeah. we can defining ourselves instead of a media defining us. Yes. Uh, or institutions. So yeah. Absolutely. We we'll keep going. Absolutely. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. Have to. Ultimately, all of these conversations benefit us. Like yeah. we, I do it. I started doing all this because of a need within me yeah. to, to understand my own history, my own community. And without the work, I, I would be lost. Yeah. <laughs> and we're so lucky to have both of you. Thank you yeah. so much. And uh, thank you all for witnessing this conversation. And uh, thank you to the Asian Art Museum for inviting us. And if you're interested, um, please check out Zamin Project uh, online, and um, any and all future updates will be available there. So thank you.